three, two. What's going on, guys? And welcome to another spoiler recap here at Big Gold Bell Media. Got myself Cam. We've got Nadia as well as Mike. I'm so surprised I was able to get the sides. Oh, which side the points to right there? Um, and we are here to talk about the boys, season four, episode six, titled Dirty Business, premiering Thursday, July 4th, 2024. Um, I'm surprised they're actually premiering it on July 4th. I thought they might have like skipped and you know done you know sometimes they'll skip like a holiday and then go for like another week uh just because they figure people got plans and stuff going on but i think we're all in agreement. some people i mean we're not gonna say people are gonna skip this episode but this one is probably one of our least favorites out of the season so far nadia give us some of your your quick thoughts of what you thought about this episode i think it's my least favorite of the series like the yeah. the entire episode felt like a waste to me and honestly yeah. i i rarely feel that way with the boys like i feel like we had very few moments that like leaded to like a bigger picture but my main problem is that this was episode six yeah and six. there's eight episodes in the season right we have so two episodes left yeah, and no nothing life. has happened typically right. by like episode you know the end of maybe episode four um episode mm. five will really like reach like a climax like we don't even know where the season is headed it's it's a lot of like exposition and like honestly this episode did not do it for me even in terms of like the um like grotesqueness i guess that we usually yeah. get with the boys yeah. Yeah. I think in this episode, it felt like wasted filler. Like it wasn't even fun yeah. to watch for me. It was just like, all right, can this scene end already? And I never felt that way with the boys before. Yes. Yeah. 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 I totally agree. What about you, Mike? Yeah. I believe this is, again, I, I, you said the season. Yeah. I was going to say the series, but then she beat me to it. Um, <laughs> yeah. Cause I, the one thing of the like the ridiculousness, the the raunchiness and all that stuff. But when it gets to a point where, yeah, you, you know, this show is notorious for not, you know, crossing the line. And when you think they couldn't go far, but usually when they cross the lines, always yes is for shock value, but also right. in some way it was pushing the story, you know, f uh, further. So when something crazy happened, like oh, but it added to the story and so like, yeah, you got comedic elements in there. But here it just like I literally was like, particularly with one character we get into, I was like, I just felt extremely uncomfortable, like just watching it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I'm like, and I was like, hey, get like get him out, <laughs> you, know? Yeah. Go, go. you know, and no, uh, and then um. Yeah, and I just felt it just felt weird, gross, and then it just till the end with, you know, all the stuff with some like milk, and then the, you know, I did get a good laugh at the, you know, <laughs> at the end with, you know, what's the safe word? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, but yeah, but yeah, but aside from that, it just, yeah, they need to, they need to hurry this up. Um, but yeah, I, I'm glad again. We, season five is, you know, the last season for next, so. We're setting up for something, hopefully, but they need to, they have to be a lot of setup for the next two episodes or something like it. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I, I completely agree. I mean, especially where we left off in episode five. I feel like this episode was just treading water, right? Like we were just trying to stay afloat until we get to episode seven. And there was really no movement into the story or, you know, with the characters for the most part. Um, there weren't really many shock moments for me as well. Um, because usually when it happens, I'm like, yo, what is going Like, why did that happen? What's going on? You know, but in this one, it was just a lot of strange things happening. Um, but yeah, this episode picks up where Butcher and Joe still have Samir captive, right? And I guess they're like in a barn, I believe, or whatever this hidden location is that they have them in. And they basically say that Joe's going to be the one to have a watchful eye over um, Samir while he recreates this soup virus right and of course we're going to get into joe's character later going on but of course nadia called it once again nadia yes. is the champ of the boys <laughs> um if there's something coming out she's gonna call it and i'm like man i i didn't even think about it until she, think said about it, so. she said it i just yeah. started piecing it i was like, i know and i was not, like he's not there it, yeah when you said it i was like that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> that makes all the sense at this point um and, and at the same time, while this is happening, of course, Huey, his mom, and a few of his friends are, I believe they're having like a, they, were they on a tour? I think through the city, right? Or was it like yeah. a, 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 uh, like a like tour in New York, York City? Yes. Yeah, tour of New York City. And they're like scattering the dad's ashes throughout the tour. I think at one of his like favorite hotels. And yeah. um, 
of course, during this time, of course, something abruptly is going to happen. And a guy shouts out while the mom and Huey and Annie are all having a conversation. He starts shouting obscenities out at uh, Annie about her abortion, which was leaked a couple episodes ago. Um, the usual Annie would have spazzed out. But at this time, she kind of was a little bit more composed than Huey was. Um, get into this episode and this relationship dynamic between Huey and Annie. What do you guys think we're going to see that evolve to or either kind of falter going further? What do you think, Nadia? Um, I think they've been getting closer, um, yeah. after everything they've been yeah. through. And then especially like Huey, like now losing his father. Um, essentially I feel like we still need to see what's going to happen with Annie, um, in regards to like the whole starlight thing. Cause they haven't still haven't really touched upon, what's happening with her, what's happening with her powers. But in terms of their relationship, I think it's bringing them closer unless we see something crazy happen with her powers that completely like shifts her, you know, like personality. But I feel like they've been getting closer. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Same. Yeah. What, what about you, Mike? Yeah. So I feel like with Huey and Annie is like, they're going down to a basically building up their happy ending at the end of this series and i feel like we're seeing like the stepping stones of where you know how each of these characters how they're going through traumatic experiences not just in terms of the violence but emotionally going through the loss of her you know of his father you know going through her thing with abortion and also just the starlight persona in general and also a firecracker coming from her past and how they're going through that together um i think that's also just building blocks in terms of their happy ending especially with the mom giving her the engagement ring and stuff and in that moment with the guy you know yelling at her i think the reason why she probably didn't react to it is also because like hey this is about huey's dad right now and stuff i don't want to make this about me um but at the same time it's just like she's still trying to become a more evolved person even though that other side to her she's tapping into and lashing out she just knows like hey no i can't let this get pissed off every single time uh when uh when things like this happen so i think yeah that's just that's probably just what happened in that scene for her not not to react you know not to give them what they want yeah 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 and that makes sense i mean and speaking of happy endings with there's another story in here that we get to see that probably won't have a happy ending or it depends on how they pan it out i mean like you said we only got two episodes left i don't know if they're gonna round it out or we'll get to see more of this character but we know frenchie is locked up right the last thing we saw was frenchie turned himself in um due to his overwhelming guilt getting the best of him i guess you could say at this point um and kamiko basically decides you know what i'm gonna go visit him in jail and she's waiting there for hours or it would seem like a time lapse of hours and he basically decides to reject her um her visitation to see him um and i think she's uh, and i think they even said it in there she's not really upset that he turned himself in but that he didn't tell her that he was going to do that you know and with that relationship between the two of them the communication obviously is lacking do you think it ever be rebuilt i mean granted she it struggles for her to be able to communicate within words, right? Because she is deaf. And of course, I mean, he isn't, but he does no sign language at the same time, right? Do you think there would be like a barrier that's going to be broken between the two of them where they have this happy ending as well? Almost like Huey and Annie. What do you think, Nadia? Um, I feel like I don't like where it's headed. I, I want, yeah. I don't know. Frenchie was so, like such a fun character and like Kamiko's yeah. such a badass. I was like, if this is like, their goodbye like it's i need way more than that like i'd rather frenchy like get killed mm -hmm. off or something like than just be like in jail i don't know it's kind of like very lackluster to me whatever's um happening and um for kamiko it's like she's had so much growth and like potential with her character that i'm like i would like to see her progress more too i don't want them to just like give up and go out like this and then they also have to like i don't know like not have that loose end with like that uh sister girl whatever that was like after her like oh, tie yeah. that up somehow like is that gonna make kamiko snap and go back to her wild ways like what's what's gonna happen with it yeah yeah that makes sense what, what do you think mike yeah i again i think this is just like well we don't know what to do with frenchy with him this season let's just give him something you know let's just divide his entire team up you know and, and just try to find something to give them because they know we already went that past them being a relationship and that's kind of you know her not wanting to be a soup and then him also his past coming to you know to get him and everything and so it's just like yeah at this point if that's the ending i think that that's a, that's a 
uh, missed opportunity. And again, I think it just just probably have some of the payoff for him coming out or breaking or her breaking him out at the end and have the CIA or something, you know, cover it up. But it, and, I mean, but at this point, we, we don't know the CIA even, even had a huge part in the season, you know, because, yeah. <laughs> you know, um, so because um, all of somebody, you know. Uh, so, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I think that, again, yeah, I'm not I'm actually really kind of getting a little bit annoyed with the whole Frenchie arc, you know, to be honest with you, because it's yeah. just like, OK, you know, like the, the, self, the self-loathing part of it and all of it, we get it. But then not, you know, it's just like, yeah, there got to be an ending to this. Either you go out as a hero or whatever or, you know, just, um yeah, I just don't know, but I think that's yeah, to me. I I, wish, I hope they just kind of just wrapped up. Like they can just be good supporting characters of the overall story. They don't even have just you know something just kind of just steer them off because we spend a lot of time with them in the previous two seasons. So it's like right. they are a well foolish developed characters and everything. So yeah, in my opinion. But yeah, yeah, that makes sense because I don't think going back thinking about back to season one, has anyone from the actual boys team died like main character wise? I don't, I don't think so right mm. can you say that again one more time like oh like the main team. like yeah like the main characters on the uh on the core team i don't think no one's really died on the show so far since season one not no no which yeah they're i mean they're setting it up obviously yeah they gotta be um, gearing it up right but yeah i i uh because only been like in secondary characters either the villains right. or like for example you know butcher's wife and right, all that right. stuff you know that nothing really you know that major um I'll, even like the side characters like stan agger he's still here <laughs> he's still <floating> so, <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's true that's true um but yeah speaking about another character we also have get to see mm or mother's milk um and it seems like he's doing like uh com.com right where he's like listening to <laughs> the meditation waters and um you are at peace, you know, on <laughs> on his phone where he's trying to find a way to deal with the stress and all of the, I guess, all the responsibility he's also dealing with now that he is, I guess, the head of the team. Um, and he immediately gets a call from a train who's basically in a panic because Cameron Coleman has been cooked, I would say right now, by um, not only V7, but two i guess you could say uh appearances that we get from kate and sam right from uh chin v he got stomped um, out. right stomped out completely um completely just destroyed at this point um and but we also see that taking cameron coleman's place is now firecracker she's like the new tv host for i believe it's called the truth bomb is what her show was but i don't think it was called that before right i think her that was like her podcast and of course it got that was like, her, yeah it that got was like bumped podcast. up a slot yeah, I got like bumped up a slot, I guess, because Cameron Coleman's so. gone. So they need somebody to kind of fill in right there. Um, but yeah, A-Train is basically, he's at all ends right now trying to figure out. Eventually, they're going to figure out that I was the person that leaked this information. And I don't want what happened to me to happen or what happened to Cameron to happen to me at this time. Um, because obviously now that Tech Knight and Sage have this, this big, I guess, plan to figure it out now um he's kind of scared you know and at the same time mother's milk is even like yeah he's screwed the dude is screwed right and we got to figure out how to help him at this point um and annie actually throws in the idea of you know what we should bring back butcher and this seems like the story of the season right now everybody's like all right when stuff shit hits the fan all right bring back butcher all right bring back butcher butcher's nowhere to be found butcher's dealing with his own mess right now and trying to figure out what's going on um but in doing so, he decides, you know what, we need an inside man to infiltrate this so-called party that they're getting ready to have with all these different legislators and delegates um, trying to sponsor, I guess, the ideas and beliefs that Newman has, um, Senator Newman. Uh, so they recruit another soup that we haven't seen before, another parody soup, it feels like right now, and his name is Webb Weaver. <laughs> <laughs> um wild that is a wild character that i've seen so far um all right we all know this is a parody of spider-man right but when nadia when you saw this character first come on here and you got to see some of the weird grotesque moments of this character to pull, pulled off in the first five seconds what, what did you think of it i was i don't even know <laughs> <laughs> I, i'm at a loss for words that this 
like episodes like uncomfortable yeah yeah very, <laughs> very. Thing about the boys it's weird but I, it was just like true like this guy yeah. was so nasty like yeah. he like was farting and shit <laughs> like it was just like <laughs> weird kinks and stuff but like yeah it's just so funny like the like parody aspect of how like we know what character it is they have some elements of these characters and then they just go so far off like it's like this guy was like a college like cokehead like yeah. frat kid or something like it was just so off the wall and he's so weird and when it first started i was like what the f is mm doing like wait right. what's going on right now i was so confused but it was like part of like their whole plan to like infiltrate and i'm like this was really their only way to get in <laughs> like right yeah <laughs> wild wild I'm, I'm so surprised this is the only only option what did you think like um i was appalled um like i know there's a version of spider-man that is actually a spider with like three you know through i think six arms whatever and mm -hmm. you, you actually saw an animated cartoon and all that stuff like that the growth more grotesque uh, stuff yeah. it, but not to this extent this is just yeah you know again like the fact that you saw his like his web hole and then <laughs> yeah all that i was just like then it's just the consistency of it and all of that and then the, the shot at you know at mother's milk you know and everything <laughs> it just it just yeah it was just disgusting um yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah i i agree it goes back to that um spider-man no way home when uh Toby Maguire is asked, does it come out of anywhere else? Right. 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 You know, that version of Spider-Man, if there was. Um, so, yeah. So, you know, they decide to suit up Huey in Web Weaver, Web Weaver's outfit. And, and honestly, I thought they were going to recruit Web Weaver to be the spy. But they decided, you know, we really just need his costume. Which I thought was a strange, you know, way to to infiltrate this party, especially if you know Tech Knight is there, and he can figure out whether people are lying or if they're nervous or, you know, um, it it just seemed like it was off, right? The storyline just seemed a little off for me because I was like, man, I was like, he's obviously gonna get caught. Yeah, um, I think they should have made it a little more obvious that like maybe ha show like a conversation with him, like, all right, we're gonna right. try to recruit this guy, and then be like, right, all right, this D bag can't do it, he can't handle it, he's too much right. of like a like a cokehead he's too much of a right. mess like maybe right. have like even just like two minutes to kind of establish that might have like helped with like the story like flow a little bit yeah 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 i, I, I definitely agree go ahead I, I was i was just confused like i mean i didn't understand like why was mother milk going there the one to go with, and like yeah. you know injecting him with that and stuff and i was like okay it must have been something that was cut or edit whatever yeah because i think the editing of that kind of threw me mm -hmm. off like wait why okay you we trying to drug him and get or he's asking a favor from you like hey can you help me with this so right. i can you know and then like all right i can do this mission for you whatever um yeah and then uh, even with you talking about Nadia, like if they did something they did recruit him but then they some happened and incapacitated him where he's like okay well all right well now we got he's unconscious but we, he's right we got an invite so well i gotta do somebody oh hey Huey, you're the same yep. height yeah so, same height of dimensions know. that makes sense yeah right um yeah yeah i just yeah i'm just not, i'm i'm just every time i'm just going back and just um this is just like this episode made me really uncomfortable i yeah. just like i mean yeah even my notes yeah. here i'm just like i came and i'm not kink shaming it was just <laughs> it was, it was, it was very yeah it was just a little yeah it was, it was definitely way over the top i think for sure um especially for mm man i feel bad bad for that guy he just he just always puts himself well he doesn't put himself in these situations but he always just seems to get the uh the short end of the stick when it comes to weird situations ass hand situations just <laughs> like this um the ad yeah. <laughs> <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> and then now he got shot uh back web poop on his face and i'm like man this is just it's just bad man it's just it's tough um but it is what it is so they decide you know we're gonna infiltrate this party of course annie says to huey before he goes in i don't think you're ready right like you're just dealing with your dad's death there's a lot on your mind there's a lot going on and of course huey's like no i want to step up to the plate i'm ready i need to help i need something to occupy my time um so they go ahead and go to this uh tech nights party and we get another parody when we just start hearing about tech night i didn't realize all this information about him but he is the, the fetish king 
Bruce Wayne, basically, right now. I think his last name was Wayne, right? Just or they called him Mr. Wayne. For me. <laughs> <laughs> they called him, they called him Mr. Wayne. His um his butler name, uh Isaiah, I think his name, right? Or Elijah. I think it was Elijah. Elijah. Yeah. Elijah. <laughs> that's what it was. Um who's 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 the who's basically the black Alfred is what we're looking yeah. at here. Um yeah. I, I thought it was that Lucy like mix all the stuff that Lucius, you know, Lucius Fox or something. Oh yeah, Lucius Fox, yeah. You know, yeah, I was like, that, oh no. It's, because, it's, it's, yeah, if you get like also a mix of both. Position. Right, it's like the, the house there in their history. Oh yeah, yeah makes sense. He's black. Oh okay. The, oh. You know what the the history of the house. So <laughs> it, it's funny because Tech Knight decided, you know what, I'm gonna let A Train know. Out of all the people in this room, I want him to know the history of how we got all this money and all this wealth. He said, yeah, my family came from a long line of slave catchers. And this is how we got all this money. And he looks at A-Train and says, I bet you would have gave my granddaddy a good run for his money. I'm, I'm like, going to catch you. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to catch you, though. Catch He's like, A-Train's like, mm, yeah, I guess we'll never know. Yes, we'll never know. Thank God. Um, but yeah, there, I mean, I think there was a lot of information that was actually exposed about Tech Knight that we didn't know in this episode, of course. They called him, I believe, Sherlock Holmes on meth is how they referred to him, um, which makes plenty of sense because obviously he uses his taste, smell, sight, and his hearing to figure out if you're lying or telling the truth. Um, I'm not, I mean, the world's greatest detective, that is Batman, right? Okay, cool. But what else does Tech Knight do, though? That's it, right? I mean, he has no other powers, right? So in the comics, he actually had a suit. Right. Okay. That act, like so, he was supposed to be a mix between uh, Batman and Iron Man. Um, okay. Which I think they didn't have the budget to, you know, have this, you know, um, you know, make this costume, whatever. Yeah. yeah. Um, and they just try and get him, make him like some type of criminal minds type stuff, you know. Right. Um, could I just save him on budget? But like with that skill and everything, yes, come in handy. But again, it's like, what's the physical, you know, yeah, attributes of you know him and everything aside from what you know his mind and everything um but yeah that's uh that day in the comics he had actual suit so yeah i so think for rich. this they made him just more of like an asset like right he's like like even homelander basically was like you're useless you're like yeah you're you can't do anything you can't you even can't fly. fly like yeah right. he literally said you can't even fly so i think tech is more so like well i own you and I own mm -hmm. your parents, and I own your grandparents, and I own everything right. you you've ever seen. <laughs> like basically, he's right. just like yeah. that scary old money. And like, what's crazy is like watching the boys. I've always like laughed, and like mm -hmm. we could always like kind of like take ourselves out. But for some reason, this episode hit a little more in a way that was like less satire, and like made me like uncomfortable with like. To bring politics into this but the way this episode felt like it was written like yesterday like it's yeah. so scary how many topics yeah. were in this literally they're talking about like the whole private prison system and like what's happening like if we go back to like the clown we're all gonna be like homeless and like get arrested for being homeless and like put in private it's, it's just scary how like yeah. relevant this episode was yeah and, like oh my god it freaked me out a little bit <laughs> yeah yeah definitely and I, I feel like another topic that keeps coming up is also um not to jump into politics but just to point out what they talked about in the episode but it also talks about abortion as well right i mean how the guy was trying to explain to newman yep. how she can what she can do with her body or how it's his choice to delegate and i'm like here we go like this is so relevant to what's going on today you know in society as well and on um, that too like they pointed yeah. out with the whole like one percent like people that were invited to this event right how basically she was like yeah it's just him his wife and his mistress so like that's basically <laughs> like a stab at like what's happening like these political figures telling women what to do with their bodies meanwhile right. they're getting abortions for their mistresses exactly exactly um yeah yeah definitely i mean like you said it does feel like it was written yesterday like they're so on par with you know social and economical topics that are still happening today it's it's it is scary for sure um but to go into a topic that we get to see with Tech Knight, Tech Knight is a wild boy. Okay. <laughs> he's a wild boy. And, you know, he's having this conversation with Web Weaver. And of course, Huey's actually in the suit, right? So Huey Weaver is what he is. And Huey don't have no back hole, right? There's no hole there. And I'm like, did they not see that? Maybe they think it completely closes. I don't know. I just thought that was kind of weird because his back is exposed most of the time. 
Um, so he asks, of course, uh, who he thinks is Web Weaver, Huey, if he would like to see the Tech Dungeon, I think he calls it. Tech Cave. Tech Cave. It should have been called Dungeon, let's be honest with you. Um, so <laughs> he pulls out a book, and they go down to the little cave, and they're like, oh, wow, this is really weird. And then we start seeing, like, all these, like, um, BDSM and sex toys and, like, one guy in a red suit. We still <laughs> yeah. don't know who he is. The guy in the he spandex. Was, <laughs> right. He's just his there Robin, still. His, his previous sidekick. I was, <laughs> like, I was like, is that Chris O'Donnell or... <laughs> All right, if you're talking about if it's Spider Man related or something, I don't know. Just, yeah, I, I know Andrew Garfield would, you know, <laughs> something like this. You know, it can't, obviously can't be Toby, but it's like, no, you know, it yeah, just, yeah. I mean, physique wise, you know, whatever, but I just like, yeah, it, I was just trying to find like what, you know, who that was. I think that could have been a, a moment, just, you yeah. know, just at least say like, hey, the Beyond Nose on the Batman reference or something, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, I agree. yeah. That was a missed opportunity. They should have yeah, like definitely. revealed somebody, like you said, Chris O'Donnell would have been like hilarious, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I thought it was crazy because I'm like, the whole time I'm watching it, I'm in the guy eventually gets out of the chains, right? And I'm like, all right, here we go. He's gonna rip off his little mask, he just leaves it on, and I'm like, all right, I guess he he comfortable whatever like <laughs> no big deal sure we'll just skip out and figure out what's going on next um so yeah huey basically finds himself in a very very uncomfortable situation because what he doesn't know is i guess tech knight i mean of course tech knight has a fetish for holes right don't matter what kind of hole just got to be a circle hopefully in that shape <laughs> um maybe ovals too i'm pretty sure but he don't he don't really care and we see Elijah is prepping all of the sex machines, you know, Master Wayne having a great time. Um, and it's it's super awkward because we're trying to figure out, all right, did Huey put himself in a situation where he's not going to be able to get out? And when you saw him down in there, did you think, did you think it was going to go worse than than where it went, Nadia? What do you what do you think? Yeah, when they were like asking like the safe word thing. Um, yeah. it did get to a point where tech was testing him. Yeah. Um, I think also with like tech, like this being like his, I guess, like kink and fetish, like something mm -hmm. he typically does. I felt like he would have had more of a conversation with the real webhead guy, um, about this. So I'm wondering, like, I guess they never had a phone call because he didn't recognize like Huey's voice or something like right. that. Like this was supposed to be his new psychic or just his new butt buddy. Like basically like they never, right. I guess they <laughs> never spoke. So um, it's just kind of like, that's a little odd um, that tech like wasn't on to anything, but eventually he kept asking him like the safe word thing. And then when Ashley was there too, cause she's into all that weird freak shit. I was like, Oh my God, like she's going to notice Huey. So I, I thought she would have picked on a little faster. I, uh, Thank God he got out. His butt was safe, but he's definitely traumatized. <laughs> Let's take a moment to look at Mike's face right now. Mike is just like, what the hell? I'm no, reliving right. it all. Wait, I want to say something real go funny ahead, real go, quick. Go you guys live in houses, right? Yeah. 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 I live in an apartment. So like, you know, when you watch something and like the actions, like, like super loud and like sometimes like you can't hear other parts yeah, so yeah. when when it was getting to like the weird like shit i was like i gotta lower this people can be like what the fuck is she watching <laughs> yeah no 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 the, okay. like my wife was watching the bet awards and i was just screaming and i texted the chat <laughs> i was actually screaming i texted her chat i was like no i legit scream like you know more because i like, know when you said that and i just like and i totally forgot about it when i watched like and then, and then, I, and then I reminded myself, oh, I, that did happen. When she, like, she was, like, you know, getting off on uh, tickling, you know, uh, Huey or uh, Web Weaver and stuff. And then she came, and then she, like, got her juices and put it in. Oh, God. Like, uh, and it was, like, it was a lot. It was just, like, yeah. was I was like, you know, I was, and I just, I just felt really uncomfortable. Yeah, this um, episode, I was like. Yeah, she, she's, she's a nasty girl um i was just like you know what ashley you were just just wrong somebody gotta take you out you just you just you just all messed up um yeah and, and she it, did it really, it's like negates her care like i'm not saying like you have a fat like whatever you know right, right. Things turns us on, whatever i'm not getting to that what i'm saying is like okay with the whole point after the whole cameron situation is like hey you and a train are like this now right and right. so we gotta figure out what we're gonna do so it's not like your story is gonna be linked and then you go on this <laughs> dungeon crap you know with tech night i'm just like i didn't give a 
think about you yeah. at this I point. I feel like you know? she's trying to secure her position because yeah. I, I think that's always been Ashley's thing where like she comes off like like super confident and stuff, um, but she's terrified essentially. And I think the whole like her sexual whatever with like um, Cam and with yeah. um, uh, Tech Knight and whoever mm -hmm. else, it was kind of like her like basically saying like i have power and her right. you know stepping on them and f being the dominating figure so i think now that she got fired um she's kind of like i need to secure my position so let me make sure i'm on tech's best like you know she's trying to stay alive but it's yeah. also very like we didn't need to see all that <laughs> yeah yeah it was just it was wild um and then she just walks out she's like well, back to <laughs> yeah. the party here's a little present for you whoop and he's like <laughs> Thank you. He's like, oh, thank you. I'm like, gross. Wow. Um, so, and then we, and then we kind of like pan back to what's going on in VOD headquarters. So currently, we see that two individuals that are part of the team are not in attendance of this party, and of course, the Deep, who, not really on everybody's best side right now because Homelander thinks he's kind of useless. And then we also have the new Noir, right? Black Noir, and um, Black Noir is just chilling. This new character has no no helmet on. He's just sitting there. I think he was like drinking sake. And he was like, oh man, all they want me to do is like learn about Japanese culture and act like I'm a samurai or a ninja. And he's like, did you know I could fly? I didn't, I mean, I didn't know that about the character or about this new version of the character. But he was he's basically feeling underused, right? Um, and it's it's funny that the deep is giving him this story that like, you know, uh violence is power, and that's how I discover how to be who i am and i'm like the deep the dude that's like knocking down ambrosia the the squid in the closet like i don't i don't know i thought that was weird did you guys think it was like a weird dynamic between the two or did you feel like the deep was trying to be somebody who he wasn't just because it's the new guy what do you think mike no it's just going back to what happened last week's episode where homelander again to a point of like uh you know we are gods and everyone else is pe peasants and stuff and yeah. what sister sage told him in the beginning of the uh, of the season like hey you you know you you, you let people walk over you know, over you and stuff because you let them um and stuff so act like you know you you know um but you're like you know you you are powerful and then so he's now trying to crave to that and then also to me it just it, it was a conversation with two people how homelander's ideology is now bleeding over through all you know soups and everything including the lowest low which is like the deep and everything uh thinking that they are also powerful because we're superior beings um because no longer about being celebrities at this point it's about you know power um and that's why i think that's where they're heading to is like screw the cameras and everything you know i want the monument so built for you know over me and everything um but and i think for him he's just trying to like that black noir which is the same act uh physical actor mm -hmm. from all the previous seasons and stuff same right. guy he um you've seen set photos and everything but now he's just uh he's just trying to get a grasp on it as a new soup and everything how that's just people you know, feel like okay you know, maybe i am a soup maybe I, you know screw these humans you know even though we, they all are just injected you know with it um but yeah that's what i think it was that that conversation was about yeah yeah what, what about you nadia yeah um piggybacking off the the nor part i like that they use the same actor because at least this is giving him like a chance to show a little more range and i'm hoping we'll see more with this character especially with him being like i can fly i can do shit like i want to be utilized and not right. just like this background character so i'm hoping in the next two episodes maybe he'll do something get more involved but um in terms of the actor being brought back like as his own character but a different version which is pretty funny in itself yeah. um and then um back to the deep i feel like since season one he's been insecure like he's always yeah. been insecure and he's always felt like he needs to like present himself as better than he is and earn his keep in the seven so i think he's still trying to be that little boy like <laughs> i'm a superhero and like yeah feel better about himself <laughs> yeah yeah no no i totally agree Agree. and i think it was a part of matter of fact i forgot a part about tech knight and his wild dungeon of uh desserts i guess we can call it so he got that giant german chocolate cake and made huey like sit on it <laughs> while he was like <laughs> i forgot like he had him like he was like german chocolate right because it feels softer on your cheeks or something and i was like what and then he had to fart you know <laughs> 
it just kept getting worse and worse and i was like oh man i was like wow this is really they're really getting in here man they're really like you know I, i'm I like we see. couldn't get a cooler like bat like you know reference <laughs> nope they were like this is what you're getting you're getting Damn. cake pickled feet and you're getting safe words and that's all we're gonna super get into this stuff. <laughs> i'm like geez man it's it's Evil. super super wild um but yeah, while this is going on, uh, Annie is feeling a little uncomfortable watching it. Um, and she's like, you know, we got to pull him out. Um, of course, MM is kind of a little hesitant about it, but she decides, you know what, I'm going to take uh, Kimiko as well as, or Kimiko, as well as um, MM. And we're going to go in there. We're going to bust out Huey. Um, it is a weird covert operation they decided to pull off. And somehow... Um, Annie ends up in the room where Firecracker is. And they're having like this weird little in-depth conversation where Annie is apologizing and telling her, you know, I'm sorry. You know, I, I I was a mean girl at the time, and but I didn't mean for it to have this huge effect on your life. And the weird thing for me is, is that Firecracker got so close to her. Nadia, did you feel like they were going to kiss in this episode? I felt like she was, I felt like she was going to just like, yeah, I'm sorry, no. too, you know? You I thought she was gonna murk her. <laughs> she was like this. They're like point I thought blank. she was gonna murk her, and I was just kind of like, I don't know. I'm kind of like annoyed with their whole situation too. Yeah. Like it's they're a, kind of just annoying. Well, like I just yeah. like just beat the shit out of her already, kill her. Like right. both of them, like their powers not being like to their extent is kind of getting played out and annoying now. Like Firecracker yeah. keeps doing this, and it's like, all right, what, what else can she do? What is that? What like, else yeah, right. can it's she not, do? It's not even Jubilee stuff. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, not what not else can she do? We saw that she's not dead. Like, she gets stabbed, and she's over here giving Homelander milk, so she was fine. But I'm just like, what right. can she do? What is, I want to know more about her power. Like, yeah. it's, it's kind of getting annoying, their whole, like, mean girl banter. It's, it's very annoying. What, what did you think, like? Yeah, I mean, again, you keep reminding me of this. Is just, I'm just thinking, <laughs> I'm just thinking, like, um, because I don't like Firecracker as a character too. I, I think she served her point. You, you know, just a yeah. thorn, just a pull off it, and then like, okay, the scene of her going to the bathroom, feeling you know second fiddle, um, you know, to Sister Sage, who you know, also the black woman, and then you know, and she's trying to you know put the smile you know on the um while she look herself in the mirror okay that's some you know i get it but it's the beauty pageant mess you know it's the you know yeah. the thing of you know smile cameras are on and everything uh but again and i, I and i really hate hate the ending too we'll jump not jumping on that but i just wish she was just well off you know or something like yeah. that and just um because i feel like she served no purpose like i think she she decided no you are the, no you're the villain of my story the starlight and uh, i'm gonna do everything i can to make you you know your life of living hell and all that stuff yeah. um that's it that and that's it that's what decision she made she had no turn leaf or anything and even the look of the eyes she feeling like oh you know she feel like oh, a sense of remorse or whatever because people yeah. don't want apologies they want uh confessions that's the thing like a lot you know even this generation too they don't want apologies and even then when you get get the apology or feel like oh you aired out starlight yeah you, you told them about the abortion all that stuff everything and you're still miserable you know, <laughs> that's the right. thing with her. And I think, again, it might be allegory, just how also just certain people just spend so much time being so visceral with each other. And this is not talking about political spectrum, just on both sides. It's just that we have this devotion of canceling people, being angry, doxing them, whatever that might be, whatever, and realize when we do that, we're still not happy. So right. I, I, again, I think that's probably what the part that um, her character serves, in my opinion, is that. But we get that. Like, yep other characters yeah. and stuff so yeah yeah i feel like yeah. also too sorry to, to no, keep getting on her but i feel like um what's her name i can't believe i just forgot her name the german nazi bitch <laughs> oh uh, stormbreaker Storm 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 yeah, stormfront yeah i feel like stormfront was such a more exciting character i feel like firecracker is yeah. like a sea villain so i'm almost like yeah. i didn't see her lasting past two episodes i feel like she served her purpose like mike was just basically saying about her you know um bringing up all this stuff with star with starlight i feel like that's it that's that was her purpose like kill her off or do something more like i need her right. character to establish more to this story because she's essentially a c-level villain that has served her purpose and like i'm tired of her <laughs> yeah right yeah i i think that makes sense i mean she just seems like a uh 
not a thug, but like, <laughs> you know, like one of the like the the putties in Power Ranger, like a million are gonna pop up and then just gets destroyed every episode. Mm-hmm. The the yeah, CW, the ultimate... a CW villain for two yeah. right. exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. And I'm like, man, she just keeps surviving every. Like, episode. She's a two episode villain. Why is she that's still it. here? That's it. <laughs> Max. Max, that's it. Um, but yeah, we see that they do get very very close to each other and. Somehow Annie hits her with a sedative, I guess, and knocks her out. Um, so that's the last little bit that we see in this little scene of a uh, firecracker um, as they're trying to infiltrate, I guess you could say, the Wayne Manor, right, or mansion. Um, so they're they're trickling through, trying to figure out where is his dungeon at because they obviously know that he's locked up somewhere, and they're struggling. And they come into the library where I mean they're getting hot onto where they need to be. And they run into the library and they actually see that Sage is actually in the room still. Um, and MM, I mean, of course, pulls out his gun with a silencer. Because as we know, there's no really like, I'm not going to say she doesn't have a superpower, but there is no uh, physical aspects to Sage's uh, strengths, right? She doesn't have any super strength, super speed. She's just a person at this point. And she's trying to talk her way out of the situation to be able to hit the fire alarm. But without being able to do so quick enough, M.M. shoots her point blank range in the head. And as we know from the last couple episodes, when she gets hit in the head, she just becomes a dummy. That's it. She just becomes dumb at this point. Um, And we got to see that through the episode. Um, But in doing so, it creates a panic attack um, that happens to M.M. And he ends up passing on the floor. I thought he had a heart attack, to be honest with you. I don't know how you guys felt about it. What did, what did you think happened to him when he just fell falter straight on the floor? Yeah, I thought it was a heart attack. <laughs> yeah, maybe he did a heart, like, heart attack, but I just thought, I was like, man, what? Like, it, just, it was just, it, it was just like what extra time, BS. Right? Like, it just, yeah, just extra BS is like, oh, like, we could just get him to, you know, we're at the spot. We don't need any yeah. other point of plot to, you know, do some crazy stuff. No, let's just pass the ninja out and yeah and, yep. and get yep. reason to get a train up in here it's just like okay like yeah. <laughs> it's it just like, yeah. like that like you, yeah. like you didn't tell me you had no heart problems man it just i think he just had it uh, the ocd just kind of just took to him and stuff but like you yeah. killed people before like you're the voice like yeah, yeah so he's, like, he's been through so much worse this this felt like a cop out. It, 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 it's just the right. way it happened it's right. like, it just like he's like oh. you know what happened like now now you now you scared like, like, what, what, now? Like, what happened <laughs> well he like, did he's been in the same room with victoria newman like right. this bothers you blow your head up right and i and i think that's crazy because like i think the only thing that we know now that M.M., his main trigger is his daughter, right? Because that's what kind of triggered his OCD, which mm-hmm. gave him the anxiety slash panic attack because Sister Sage, you know, revealed that she has been keeping tabs on the daughter at this time, um, which kind of sent him over to edge, which probably made him actually decide to shoot her in the head in the first place. Mm-hmm. Um, but in doing so, M.M.'s on the floor. And uh, Kimiko decides, you know, we have to need to find somebody that can get him to the hospital fast. She happens to look down the steps. Here's A Train sitting there with champagne in his hand, and she throws some uh, roofie tablet in his drink, right, or whatever it was, just like a pill. Just do right in, in the pop, perfect aim. Quaalude in the pop, right in there. She got the best yeah. aim in the world. I never seen such a thing in my life. Seriously, um, right? And I'm like, all right, cool, whatever, sure. It's a story. We're just gonna go with it. So she gets a train to come up there. And of course she can't speak. She didn't have her notepad at the time. So she starts finding books to say what she wants him to do. Take him to the hospital. Uh, don't do it for me. Do it for his daughter. Um, I thought it was a cool way for her to be able to communicate. But at the same time, I felt like it was like a, a little bit extra that we probably didn't need in that scene. What did, what did you guys think about it though? I'm gonna go with you, Nadia. Uh... I don't know. I didn't really like this scene either. Like yeah. all the points we just kind of touched upon, it just felt like I don't know. They've they've done better. The, this I'm gonna throw a CW like reference again. <laughs> yeah. Like this felt like you know when a show like a like a showrunner like a writer comes in mid season that's never mm-hmm. seen the show before or something like that and it's just like summarizing real quick. All right, what's the show about? And just writes right. a scene. Like it didn't feel like what we've been given with the boys before. Um, But back to like this particular scene, um, I think what the show maybe is trying is forcing itself to do is find ways to make A-Train more relevant because 
in terms of like um the seven he's not really doing anything besides his movie um i feel like this is the only way for the whole like redemption arc that they keep trying to to give us um and i am feeling for a train like the right it, the, it goes into the scene where he he takes mm to the hospital and the little boy smiles and that actually yeah. made me yeah, smile yeah, yeah. like i yeah, i was, was i was cheesing that at was that good. scene because yeah. like you saw like in a train like wait like i can actually be a superhero like wait this right. is real and like right. the way the kids face lit up it was like oh man like this is kind of what we wanted with a train so maybe now he's like like really gonna put his foot down like i need right. to stop the seven and he's gonna officially become a member of the boys i don't know something um but i think that's what they were trying to <laughs> i think that's what yeah, they that's were what really I, <laughs> I know like, no i don't I'm want like, it <laughs> but i think that's I what they <laughs> that's what they are um like trying to make him more uh of an arc this season because essentially that's his only arc if that makes sense yeah no no it, it does what, what about you mike yeah i said no he's through uh, <laughs> two episodes and stuff um, right. um but listen that now that moment i couldn't really fully received it because like i i didn't know what was going on like at that moment i felt like okay yeah he's smiling because all of a sudden, like Homelander's just landing. Oh, and the kid wasn't smiling because he see he sent him. He's high, like, oh, Homelander, right behind him, just to you know, right, right, <laughs> something, right, you know. But uh, um, yeah, I gotta rewatch that to fully embrace that scene again. But aside from that, um, yeah, yeah, no, he again, he his arc is going to end this season, and I think the hero act is not over. I think he's going to go out saving somebody, yeah. um, and stuff until a point we'll have a conclusion with the uh. His brother and his nephews and stuff so they can see it because like it's not until when they see it that, that that's when it's like yeah his arc is done yeah, yeah. So, yeah. so that's that's to me where um that, that they'll continue on with that but yeah no no but yeah he's through now i don't yep. want you i actually like the, you know the actor even though yeah he the character's done you know terrible things and stuff like that but it just get to a point of like yeah he uh, from being remorseful at this point like what bad thing has he really done aside from taking, you know, going through the girl in season one um, mm -hmm. and killing his ex-girlfriend or his, his girlfriend and stuff, ODing herself um, yeah. and uh, killing the, uh, what's the name, the um, Blue Hawk because he attacked yeah. the, you know, the community oh, yeah. and then just dragged some bodies over, you know, that already been killed, but he didn't give the final blow or anything. He just took them. Yeah. You know, but... Yeah, um, I'm I'm tired of him being the punching bag. Even though I'm not giving him no sense of like, oh yeah, he's good. He's a good guy. Like, no, no, it no. just it's that <laughs> that's yeah. been paid. But yeah, so yeah, yeah, I think he's going. He will become punch bag one more time, and it's gonna be it's gonna be the last time probably too, which is terrible because you know that one reaction that I saw in there when I first saw the kid smiling at him, and I was like, oh, his little ass gonna tell the news. And that's it. That's it. Then he's gonna be like, I saw A Train, he saved this man. Then they're gonna look and see who the man was. And I was like, I didn't even think of that. That's what I was thinking the whole time. I was like, that his little ass gonna run his damn right. And but then I was thinking, like, oh, he's bracing, like, oh, wait, I gotta get this kid too because he saw me and his mom, or like, you know, or like just embracing all the hero point and everything. But yeah, 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 that's the only thing I could think of. And I was like, oh man. Well, and, and and also this is another thing because this the race mentality of it. I was like, because this is my thing, and I'm wait hoping the, with the conversation with Sister Sage and Newman, right? Mm -hmm. Because when we get to that, it's like she's she's saying, "Hey, I'm not with this. I'm just here for you know the the intellectual part of this whole group and everything for soups." Right. But at the same time, uh, I am black. I'm a black woman, and I found a cure for cancer and all stuff. And they looked at yeah. me like they laughed. And yet you're in a room with this, you know, this history of people of these slave of you know profiting off these, you know, prisons and like slave owners and everything. Yeah. And then A Train is also in the same room who's also a former teammate. Right. And I'm just kind of feeling like, hey, it's like you have this team up almost with Newman and everything. And I'm just like, what are you gonna do with A Train or A Train right. through and stuff? Or are you gonna, you know? I don't know. That's where but it just that conversation kind of threw me like, yeah, she's not a part of this, but she is right at the same time, which is like, you know, so I, yeah, I don't know. But with that, with, with her well, on that, um, they still trying to see what, what the book that, that little pony book, whatever she had, like what's in there. Like, right. 
in in and when i was looking at it or watching that episode i do feel like she's trying to maybe establish connections to other people besides homelander to be able to kind of rally them to her side because we all know that sister sage or sage i keep calling her sister sage that's a stupid name uh, sage she has she has an end game plan right she's too smart to be foiled by the quick thoughts and formalities that homelander might have in his mind but at the same time she don't really have no powers so it's like she has to rally these people around her that could possibly not only keep herself alive but you know extend the life beyond i guess the era or reign of homelander and nadia do you think i mean obviously i mean pretty sure you think the same thing right i mean about the the dynamics between uh victoria newman as well as sage and what they're trying to establish now it seems like i think like reflecting back on a conversation we had a couple episodes ago about mm -hmm. us like still not really sure what alliances mean what where the story is essentially going like right. it's kind of like at the point where we should already know and it's two episodes left and we still don't really know what's going on i would like for sage to be like an instrumental character i want her to be more um the way she was shot and like left like dumb eating in the corner mm -hmm. i'm like i hope that this is just like taking long for her to heal and that by the next episode she's going to be on her game because i want to know her plan i i think this character is too big of a character to go out like dumb yeah. or like to just be like i don't know like a like i'm trying to think of the word but like i don't want her to be like a um what's the word that i'm looking for or like a not a jobber, but I, I don't want her character to just like not have a real purpose and just be like right. the Placeholder. fake plan. Like we we yeah. thought she was gonna be bigger than she is. I don't right. want that to happen. I want her to have a plan. I right. want because the the conversation also back to that conversation they were having. She was basically saying like f them all. Like humans right. are ants. Like speaking like Homelander, and I was like. I want her to be more than that. I don't want right. this to just be a plan. Let me team up with the white people and kill everyone. I want her to be like, F these white people. I'm gonna get them them all in jail. Like I, I want her right. to have a, a bigger picture, like to right. flip the game and and all these like like one percent monsters like turn it around and get them in jail. Like like I want her to have a, a plan. Yeah. That's yeah. that's what I'm hoping for. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think I think we all are, honestly, because I mean that would be very disappointing if it's just like all right just a quick yeah, little, like i hate human beings quick like little if, character if boom, human boom, beings, there are so many other ways this could have been handled like yeah you yeah. could have made a bomb <laughs> like right right exactly um so we are really anticipating what's going to happen in episodes seven and eight as well but of course we're going to flip right back to tech night this dude just won't go away in this episode so far and um now we see that kimiko as well as uh annie are down in the basement finally get there and in the nick of time before getting sliced and diced, they save um, Huey, who's posing as Web Weaver from a scalpel, I guess you could say. Um, and, you know, they're, they're basically having a conversation with uh, Tech Knight about like, you know, what is the plan? What is going on? What are you guys trying to do? Or what is the big overall picture for not only humans, but also soups? What are you guys trying to do? and he's like i'm not going to expose my information i can't tell y'all anything so they start donating tech nights uh money to non uh profit organizations right and the one that set him over the top <laughs> was black lives matter <laughs> he was so pissed. like no please don't they don't do anything please don't send them any money <laughs> and i was like come on bro i was like my god and um of course they got assistance from I guess you could say the the first sex slave that was in there in the red suit. I don't even know what we can call him. Yeah. Red suit Robin. I don't know what to call him. Um, red Robin. Red Robin. That's good. Yep. Yep. Yes. He probably had egg on him. All right. Sorry. That was too much. But um, yeah, a little wild. And they decide, you know what? We're going to send it to Black Lives Matter anyway. <laughs> and he gets pissed. But he tells him that I believe it was uh in internment camps is what they're doing. Um, And I think that was for the – that was – for the humans though right yes is what they're definitely. planning on doing so they want the world domination to be ruled by soups and they want to take humans and put them in these internment camps and in doing so and having this last little bit of conversation trying to figure out more information about it they're like you know what? we should kill him now nah, we should just go ahead and kill this guy and he's like you know what you're screwed you guys are screwed anyway and here comes elijah 
coming behind Tech Knight and was like, I'm going to choke his little ass out. So he like starts strangling him. And he's like, I raised his little ass from birth. <laughs> and I'm so, so sick of his ass coming to find out, you know, they were doing all this crazy things. But endurement camp was the last straw, you know, I mean, because it kind of sucks for Elijah, right? This is his job. This is where he worked. He's, he's raised Tech Knight through all these years. It felt like he was like a, like he was a black slaver. I can't right? say the name, but anyway. I know, no, 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 no. no. <laughs> we can't, can't say the name, name, but we know it was you like. Um, I mean. <laughs> it was like what was my my man from uh, Django? Um, yeah, I can't. You know, say come it. on, right? Okay, from yeah, Django. Yeah, no, I can't. Right? Say it. Exactly. Right. Like, how many <laughs> you think you see come through here? That's exactly what we saw with Elijah's character, and Elijah had enough, so end up strangling and killing Tech Knight, and now they had the information that they needed. To be able to, I guess, they didn't really decide whether they're going to expose the information, but they're trying to figure out how to, I guess, stop this from happening in the future, though. Um, and you find and the then, safe word. Right, yeah. right. Found out the safe word, which I think was what? Uh, Zendaya. 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 <laughs> that was pretty funny. Why the hell? Yeah, you know, know what? That was funny. Oh, you know what? If you think about it, that makes sense, though. Because he's Web yeah. Weaver, right? Which yeah. is Spider-Man. So it's like, Zendaya, right, right, right. Exactly. I didn't think about that. I need to put that together. Yeah. Wait, I think wait, one time... Oh, sorry. Go yeah. ahead. No, 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 no go, 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 go ahead. No, I was going to say, before I forget, I just literally thought of like three points. Mm -hmm. Like back to the whole Sage having to have a bigger purpose. Um, right. One, the fact that she brought up like that her grandmother was a Black Panther. Right. Um, Two, that she brought up the whole thing about leukemia. Her being right. the smartest person, I feel like she could have done way more in terms oh, of yeah. like establishing like um communities or like uh like scientific research she, i feel like she could have found other ways um her essentially partnering with them like i said i hope it's it's for a bigger picture but this made me even think of another thing um why didn't the boys just kidnap her if she's the smartest person she can clearly figure out a way for a cure she, they should that have at least true. attempted this yeah yeah, that, is like true. that, that kind true. of like just annoyed me. I was like, wait a second. <laughs> she could literally come up with a cure. Yeah. I, that, I mean, that makes sense because they probably could have saved themselves true. a lot of trouble, right? I mean, <laughs> this this whole episode probably could have tie never her happened. down and like, right. like torture her. She doesn't right. have flying abilities or laser abilities or speed. or. I think the fact their laser focus was just on Homelander and stuff. They weren't even really focusing on stage other than the fact of what she did for Homelander and yeah. um and again the whole sage thing like that was really all within the within the the uh the seven and that interaction mm -hmm. and everything because i think they all had different issues going on where they weren't even really focusing that and that idea absolutely right like well we can just kidnap her um right. but at the same time it'd be like well if we kidnap her it should be notified because she's basically homelander's right hand woman and and now but i think because of the fact that well, then no, because the Newman doesn't know that they have her husband. They know, yeah. So right, it's right. Or, or you know, baby daddy, whatever. Um, yeah. And um, yeah, it just like saves you the time. It's like two days. She did find a cure for leukemia or whatever in two days. Like, right. And, right. and and yeah, which that does highlight too. Of like, yeah, when you take race out of it, just when the cure is brought to whatever, you know, it doesn't matter. It's the profit that you know. Uh, people will get, especially from patents on these medicines that actually right. can cure right. us and stuff. Right. And they don't want that out in the you know, mass public and everything. So yeah. that, that definitely is true. Yeah. Yeah. A lot. A lot going on in this episode. And there's still more that we're going to talk about here, too. It's 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 crazy that, like, this is probably our least favorite episode, but there were so many things that happened. Right. It was just, like, back to back to back to back. <laughs> so it literally, like, there's so much to unload. Um. But during this time, Homelander and uh, uh, Victoria, they have a conversation and he knows that um, uh, Eg Stan Edgar actually escaped, right, from the prison. And of course, Newman, she's going to lie and say, like, oh, I have no idea. That's crazy. I have no idea how he escaped. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, I'm like, uh, OK, <laughs> thank goodness he can't hear if your heart beating faster right now. But she does have blood control power so she can make it slow down. Right. I mean, regardless if she's lying or not. Um, but she decides to step up in the conversation of having, uh, basically she becomes the focal point in front of the one percenters or, uh, these legislators that are in charge of all these different things. And it, it, essentially it was supposed to be, uh, Sage that was going to talk, right? I think mm -hmm. 
But she got well, she got dumb. She got shot in the head. So <laughs> she, she head. over there. She's like, one time I fit a whole thing of uh, what's called in my mouth, and I'm like, candy corn. It was candy I'm like, corn. What? I'm like, yeah. It's a whole what are you talking about? Mouth. I'm like, all right, that's good job, good job. Um, so so uh, Newman decides to jump out there and you know become the forefront person that's going to have the conversation with these one percenters about why they should join their team. Or why they should be on their side so that they can take down um god what was the name of the the senator or the the legislator singer? That was it to... singer singer yeah, yeah yeah singer right um and i guess everyone there was kind of fearful of like why why should we join your team and she basically said because i don't give a shit, right I'm, I'm gonna i'm gonna f up everything and i'm gonna make sure that everyone's going to basically follow the the leadership that i'm going to be running here um did you think there was i i didn't think that conversation was going to go like that or i didn't think they were going to get on her side because they all seemed like i don't want to say racist but like i just felt like you know i just felt like that's not the type of person that that the the look that she has right is not who they follow essentially on an everyday basis right so did you feel like all right there was going to be some type of conflict between the two of them nadia when you saw it i'm just so confused by yeah. everything by who's with who who's with right. what homelander and newman hate each other or homelander's like like i'm gonna throw it back to trump again he doesn't know how to answer any questions because he's right. a complete idiot and right. literally he's like uh well i don't know how to do this sage sage like um sage <laughs> and he's, he's like, like freaking like, out <laughs> because he doesn't know what to do and then right. newman's like oh i'm i'm the one answering all the questions i'm the one taking charge but i'm just like who's her allegiance to what's her ulterior motive she still doesn't want people to know that she's a soup why right. doesn't she just blow all these guys heads off like i i'm just so confused by the end game i think that's my main issue with this season we still have no end game no clue of what alliances mean what's what who's where are we killing soups are we not killing soups like what's what's going on yeah yeah same yeah. what about you mike see okay because again the comics i know like the end game where, where this is going and then and like it and it's like you're so you're at the door but you're not crossing no. you know <laughs> you know right. getting in there right we don't need to go all the way up to the bedroom we can, we're still let's just get into the living room the, you know the hallway and stuff before we get into the big <laughs> you know what i mean um and make sure you take your shoes off too uh but it's like you know but the thing is is like the 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 point with her again because in that room to me was like oh like they're going to kill these people in this room and saying, Hey, we are the superior beings and everything, not by whole power. Cause like the whole point is like, we don't need you. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, right. that's the whole thing. It's like, yep, you guys on the opposing side, whatever. Just let me know. I'm gonna right. pop a few people heads in here and just let you know we're not messing around. But <laughs> just to have just to have talking, because then even when you're talking about uh the the, the the opposition that he has and everything the questions that he was getting that he was getting homelander i thought he was like yeah i'm just lasering all of you now at this point right i'm trying to play nice here but like that's the and that was the whole point like right. screw humanity like i'm i'm coming here this is not you know you guys just think this is an auction though no, this is a funeral for y'all you know boom right and and um and stuff but yeah and then for newman i think that's just her to have her whatever plan that 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 they were going to have that she now she has to foot in it because she's the one who gave it uh to them and stuff um but just just an easier way to get her into the white house and stuff but the ending of the boys the comics like with the character newman and that um mm -hmm. and, but th that character wasn't a soup though right it and was it a man was, it was a man <laughs> yeah. too right and if they do something and i think i can't really say it's a spoiler i'm like okay they could do something very interesting but if they have to like cross the line here and like you know and get to the meat of this like this should end with the nominate like a nomination win like you know like we should right. know who the president and the vice president is and everything and then like oh the president's gone now we got president president newman you know right so that's right. that that's what we need to get to so um yeah uh but also just her thing with stan edgar because now you're the one that let him out like so what you know and, and he don't mess with homelander he told him what this right. happened so at this point, it's not like a one one versus evil, like, you know, thing. Like we know who the good guys, we know who's the antagonist and everything, even though everybody's messed up their own ways. No, we don't. It's like 
three on two yeah. and four. Like, you right. know, like it's yeah. It, and what was um, what was going on with the prisons? Were they gonna imprison human beings? They were okay with that? Or are they just imprisoning poor people like what's their motive i'm so confused <laughs> it yeah was for, it was for the for humans but i think that's the what what uh starlight and huey got you know the gist of which is worse like they get to the line like no butcher we need you because that's yeah. what right you know jeffrey d morgan said about the camps he mentioned that mm -hmm. in the end of the yeah season. so it's like he's the only person that said it <laughs> in this in this entire season before you know they find out what the actual plan was so yeah but yeah 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 speaking of jeffrey dean morgan right i mean well i think this episode in this season was the least we've seen of butcher right this is very this this episode was very not focused on butcher he was kind of like um a side story that was going on in the background that we got glimpses and peaks of um of course he is struggling with uh samir because he is of course forcing him with uh one and a half leg to make up this cure out of a blown up goat i believe right that was in that bottom of that bucket from what we saw or a sheep one of those damn animals i don't know it was in the bucket though and he's like you got to use this and you know compound it to basically figure out the virus um at during this time you know butcher is still throwing up blood or black stuff i don't know what the hell that was to be honest with you he's struggling he's got probably days or unless there's a cure then he probably gonna croak at this point um and he's struggling with this conversation that he's having back and forth with uh uh was it joe joe kessler right who is uh jeffrey dean morgan um they are having a conversation which is almost a one-sided dynamic because joe is telling him exactly what he's going to do and what he should do to basically get the job done and he finds out from samir that there is no way for him to recreate this virus unless it is potentially more deadly than the virus that was i think created before because this version for it to work it would have to be airborne and there's no cr controlling the virus if you administer it to one person so in doing so he would not only be killing you know homelander but he'd be killing every soup there ever was and even you know his Friend. not biological son <laughs> but you know it, it, Re ryan. rebecca's son ryan right and and he also he has a moment where he thinks about his friends as well he's like oh uh kimiko as well as annie you know i, I we got to think about them too which is a side of butcher that we really don't get to see <clears throat> and nadia called it we're watching it he's arguing with joe and then becca's in the back of his head like butcher you can't do this you're gonna kill your friends and then we hear jeffrey dean morgan's character like shut up you b and we're like you can see her <laughs> you can see her oh my god um when you when it finally came through right that joe is a part of butcher's imagination right what what did you think about it nadia i just thought like it was getting like not to say like annoying but like his character just like seemed like why is he here i right. was just starting to realize like he never wanted to meet the team right um he was always like basically like talking like down about the team and kind of seems very like we got this we got this it's just us right. and like i was like where did he come from like he right. seemed like maybe he was going to be some big military dude but where's the backing he had right. he had no no character outside of um uh butcher we never mm -hmm. saw him like you know having a phone call or like we never saw him in a a base or like literally right. just doing anything besides right. being next to home um being next to butcher so yeah. i was like wait a second like i I think he's just there because he keeps yeah. talking in a very like weird like i'm in your head kind of way and i was like holy shit he's not real and then like it got to the point where he started talking to becca and i was like oh he's definitely not real <laughs> no, <'Cause>, like, <laughs> these two sides and like we keep seeing butcher like talking to himself and like in these like weird situations where he's just like very like alone this season so i was like oh mm -hmm. that guy's not real right right yeah yeah i know i know i agree what did you, what did you think mike yeah, I didn't think in that moment it just didn't like I didn't caught it until he told her to shut up and then I was like, wait, what? And then like, oh, he, you know, <laughs> uh, just like Nadia caught it, Nadia caught it, you know. So, yeah. Yeah, that's all. That's all I was focused on. Nadia caught it. Um, yeah. yeah, I um, yeah, I, I thought it was interesting that seeing okay because 
he has he has something in him ability not just the warrant you know the guy be some like i'm, I'm they hope they're probably gonna say that for the finale and everything but um it's just like okay then what is it like some type of moon knight situation where mm-hmm. you know hey you know you're right now you're with you know your wife now because you're butcher but then when you have the other side you're just mm-hmm. this mo- monster with the tentacles and everything right you know the venom side of you right yep. um but again we get to see that no we now we have this you no know, bomb that's dropped on us and like now how that's gonna pay off i don't know but like i need an answer like and it know. explained the blackout right exactly right. right yeah yeah oh yeah it does it does right which is very similar to moon knight like you said yep. uh mike very very similar and similar to moon like that nothing happens on screen <laughs> right. yeah exactly just right flashing lights and then people are are dead everywhere um yep. which which makes a bunch of sense i mean will make sense for for this episode and i think it's crazy because at the end of that conversation uh between i guess two imaginary people and butcher um joe tells him if i want something done i do it myself that's like oh man you have zero control like what if i go to sleep who knows what i'm gonna do in my sleep right it's like oh man you can't even trust yourself to you know lay down and take a nap at this point because joe is probably gonna take over um and he said daddy's home like you know <laughs> yep yep i was like oh man i was like yo he means serious business at this point um but also, also during this time where we could see almost towards the end of the episode, uh, Kimiko decides, you know, I'm gonna go back or, you know, go see Frenchie one more time. And I mean, it's not like a huge scene in this episode, but of course she's there like early in the morning when the place is opening up and essentially the lady's like, why are you coming back? You know, like he obviously doesn't want to see you. And she's like, I got nowhere else to be. Right. Who knows how long this is going to go on for. I'm hoping we don't see this happen again next episode. They need to kind of move this a little faster, (laughs) you know, um, because I don't want to watch two more episodes of her going back to a waiting room. (laughs) Let's just talk through them through a glass wall. You know, like, I don't, I don't, I don't know. Um, I'm pretty sure we all have the same sentiment about that because I just feel like it's very, very slow. Um, But in, in a, I guess... A more important note in this episode, there's a conversation between Firecracker and Homelander back in the VOD base, right? And um, she essentially tries to expose the information that uh, Coleman wasn't the lead, right? And Homelander immediately puts two and two together. Well, he kind of just pieces it together. No one ever said this, that Sage was lying, right? Which is going to put Sage probably in some type of crossfire at this point. I'm like, trying to throw her ass under the bus. Firecracker already got a problem with her. So we already knew this was going to happen. Like she's just looking for people to, you know, put underneath her so that she can get closer to Homelander. Yep. And she immediately points the finger to Sage. And of course they're having this weird moment and firecrackers it keeps getting closer. And she's like, I just want to give you this. And she starts undressing herself. And he's like, ew, I don't want to no, no, I don't, I don't even like you. Like I'm not even, you know, uh, sexually attracted to you at all. And he finds out that, through uh many different vitamins i guess and prescriptions she made herself able to produce breast milk just for homelander weird that's that's the weirdest thing i've ever seen in my life i don't think anybody's been like guess what i got for you guess that was (laughs) unexpected yeah yeah i think everybody was kind of shocked and we get to see baby (laughs) home cradled up you know getting his vitamin vitamin c that's kind of wild what i mean what what do you think is going to happen with <laughs> Mike's face? Mike is getting close. <laughs> that's how i felt man i was like oh my gosh what is going on mike what, what do you, what do you think is going to happen with their converse i mean their relationship dynamic after this i mean they're you can't get no closer than this right so what do you think this is going to make her kind of immune to you know being knocked off or what do you think I think I, I would I, I wish he just killed the bitch. I'm just like I mean <laughs> like, for me yeah. like I mean because it's like you took you you had an amazing fourth episode probably one of the best episodes of the series and stuff. You took like you no know, two steps forward to take six steps back. Uh-huh. You know that that literally what I felt like that that whole talking on the you know Teddy sh- like mess that was that was all with um uh, what's her name from season one. Madeline right? was it. No, yeah, not um, Madeline. The, uh, Valerie. Valerie, yeah, whatever, yeah. yeah uh, that, that, yeah, with that, and so it's like to have another, 
uh, character, but then you had it with Stormfront. Even though you weren't getting milk, you were just getting someone who was a superior, you know, being with you and everything, and, and viewed you as this type of god and everything. But then now you got this this girl who just only just there just to see the validation, just like you. But like your whole point, what you're saying was, I don't need nobody. You know, that was right. the whole thing. He <laughs> for you to go back to the to the source. It's like I don't need humanity. I don't need no milk. And much as I you know what my like it whatever. Because nobody's controlling me, making me into a we. When you, when I see him now as that, it's like no, he's just a baby, a human, or you know, the human tendency that he said he was trying to destroy. I just saw it again, right? And I'm yeah. just like, it, it just, you know, yeah. And, and but also too, it's like we don't know where the root comes from. Like I think that was also like the con for episode four. It's like okay, we can get everything aside from him, his brutality, mm-hmm. his. You know nature and everything but where was the source of milk come from where's the mommy complex come from you can't just say oh i just i i killed my mom in childbirth and and i killed every mom that came up to me and everything like no where is your addiction to milk come from mm-hmm. right you know and, and, and in a place of abuse or whatever that might be that's where i thought barbara was breastfeeding him or something right, like, right. Yeah, yeah, no. that's a good point <laughs> that yeah. that's what i'm saying that 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 was the the, the seed was right there it was planted and it just like yeah. Yeah, now it just seems like you just have the weird fetish and a milk and stuff. <laughs> no. I'm just like, it, it, you know, yeah, yeah. I just, it just, it's six steps back for me when I saw that. It it's was not stupid. even like funny anymore. It's no, just like, funny. it's just like, it's just, no, I, no, why? <laughs> he's just gonna, he's gonna curdle up with that lady. All right, that's a little wild. Um, but he, he probably likes her a lot more now, though. What do you think? I mean, I, She's a groupie. She's just yeah, like people ain't laughing no more. Yeah, <laughs> right. That's, that was that was good. That was wild. Good. <laughs> um, I think the only other part that we missed on on this episode is that, of course, Huey and Annie. Of course, they're you know, they have a very telltale relationship where, like, you know, she he's very truthful about what's going on. So he decided to tell her that uh, Ashley rubbed one out <laughs> while he's crying. Uh, it was a weird way to end the episode, especially, you know, um, I mean, I understand his trauma. There's a lot of things that were going on. And of course, he's still newly dealing with the death of his father, that, which he said he was OK. But, you know, usually when people say they're OK, they still need time to kind of breathe and recuperate and, you know, figure out what the next step of life is. Um, was there anything that you guys want to talk about that we might have missed on or we didn't touch on in this episode? I think we touched literally like every. There was a lot. <laughs> there was a lot. So I mean, I think we did. How about you, Mike? Yeah. Again, we speak going back to Huey. I just felt really uncomfortable because, like, I had almost had a little bit of anxiety, like, build up when, like, Tech Knight. You know, he's locked down and Tech Knight in there, and he's just playing this. And I'm just like, y'all, like, where, like, where are y'all? Like, get him wow yeah. right? You know, it just, and I just, in that moment, I just felt that you know so bad for him and just you know it's not um i understand the kinky nature of the show and everything like that but after your dad just you know passed away and then we see you in this state and everything it just it just yeah, yeah. i just didn't you know it, it it just made me really uncomfortable just in that position i don't know I, what do you call it trigger i don't know yeah. but I, i'll yeah. process that on my own but it just yeah it just bothered me Question for you guys, though. Do you think this is going to be traumatic enough where Huey's going to be like, you can't put me in shit like this anymore. I don't have powers. But I don't feel like it reached that. He started crying about his dad again. So I'm almost like, what was the point in this? (laughs) If it's not going to be like an an overarching thing for him where he was like, I almost got raped or I almost died. Like for it to like be triggering enough for it to matter. I don't know. Yeah. I, I definitely feel like, I mean, I think he might still, I mean, be the guy to go undercover for like weird situations like this. But like you said, it seemed like he was way more concerned about, you know, him still dealing with the death of his father when being, um, you know, comforted by Annie, opposed to being in this crazy dungeon with Tech Knight. You know, that probably would been the first thing I would have cried about, um, especially somebody tickling my feet, like, and me having to sit on, you know, chocolate German cake that I'd probably be. That that would be my first concern before anything, yeah. right? <laughs> but you know, to each his own. You know, what, what about you, Mike? Yeah, like even now, I'm having like anxiety built up from it. Like <laughs> it just like it because it's just like too. I mean, I don't think now. I'm honestly just knowing the show. They're just gonna gloss over it and just still process with that. You know, and not can be caring about that. You know, um, I, I just feel like that would just just terms like after 
everything he did in the episode saying, hey, work, and I'm I'm committed to work so he can distract me from my dad's uh, passing. And right. now he gets to the point at the end of the episode, like, he's able to breathe and just probably let himself process it. And, like, that's where I felt, yeah, they're not going to keep going back to this, like, oh, yeah, you just had this thing with Tech Knight and never, no, Tech Knight's gone. He dead, dead as confirmed, um, yep. you know, and stuff. So, um, even now, it, unfortunately with the, what's their name? The, um, uh, the, the CEO, the mascot mm-hmm. now, um, what's her name? Oh, Ashley. Ashley. Yeah, yeah. I don't care what she does anymore. I hope, yeah, I mean, I hope she's off by the end of the season and stuff. I mean, at this point, like I, she had saving grace when that whole thing was trying to get back at Homelander, trying to quit and everything and all that stuff. But then just like, you keep going back to this kink of dominance mm-hmm. and all stuff. Yeah, I would get it. You did that thing with the freaking <laughs> the anchor guy. All right. He dead now. Don't like, then you just go yeah. back to, oh, yeah the next one i'm just like man <laughs> yeah they're def- definitely yeah. real i mean beating the dead horse i think with that one um but if you let's round it out if you guys what do you what would you rank this episode out of five nadia oh, boy two? <laughs> two okay all right that, that's higher than i i i thought we would give it though but one point <laughs> one point five <laughs> okay you dropped it down all right that's fine mike <laughs> mike would you give it um Hey, I give it a 1.5 and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. I usually have the same. I say I give a rating S for shit, but you know, <laughs> I don't do that. Uh, I'm not gonna do that for this because, like, there was good things in this episode right. and stuff like right. that. But it just to me, the big thing where they just focus on more of the grotesque, mm-hmm. and that was the the meat of this episode. And it just kind of just put me in a spot where I was really just feeling uncomfortable just watching it. And, yeah. and you know, yeah, you ended off with thing of butcher and stuff like that, but it just like, you know, yeah, it, it just kind of crossed the line. Now, imagine like after everything they've gone through in the last previous season, how am I gross test with this? Exactly. Stuff, you know, right. but because right. I'm, you know, because now at this point I'm 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 tired of it, <laughs> like you know, yeah, yeah. And um, so yeah, that that's that's that that's really it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that I'll give it. Uh, I just give it to just saying like yeah, it's the weakest um one of the series definitely the season i thought last week last week episode was sweetest nah 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 i'll yeah. watch <laughs> god you know. please episode seven dude it can't yeah. it, it can't get any weaker i'll be honest with you I, i'm gonna give it a 1.5 myself too um like you said the grotesqueness was kind of just a little bit over the top and i just wanted more storyline and more development um but hopefully in these next two episodes we will get that um I'm everybody at home 1.5 Oh, you changed back. Okay. All right. Yeah. 1.5 is all around. All right. Yes. We're even good. Good. Um, everybody at home, make sure you check out the boys season four, episode six, titled Dirty Business. It definitely was premiering on Thursday, July 4th, 2024. Uh, make sure you guys check out all of our links down bottom uh for all of our main pages. And if you guys like more content and want to see more reviews just like this, go ahead and check us out at biggoldbeltmedia.com. Until next time, peace.